so we continue with the nine stages of training the mind. Uh, last time, if you look at the summary, last time we talked about, we already have mentioned mental placement, continuous placement, patch placement, and uh, now we are coming to close placement. Uh, before we go on, I think it's quite important that we have to know what, what's the objective of meditation. Uh, the objective of meditation, when you analyze the objective of meditation, is, is to train the mind and what's wrong with the mind. Um, how did the mind get in contact with the outside world? The mind get in contact with the outside world through the senses. What are these senses that we have? The sensory organs, or the eyes, interact with matter. All matter, eyes see things. This is round, this is square, this is red, this is white. This is ugly, this is pretty, this is fat, this is thin. The eyes interact with matter. Um, what is matter make up of? Then we know molecules, atoms, protons, electrons. Eyes interact with matter. And ears interact with sound. Nose interact with smell. Tongue interact with taste. Body interact with touch tactile objects. And of course, the sixth consciousness, we call it the uh, mono consciousness, interact with all things. Interact with things that happened in the past that we recollect with the present and with the future. And that is of course another consciousness which is the manas consciousness, that is the ego consciousness. That ego consciousness generates the ego identity, uh, the self identity. And this ego recognizes I as the central unit, which is, of course, erroneous. This is mine, this is yours. I gotta protect myself. I can ruin you if you hurt me. Um, this ego, this ego creates a lot of problems. The selfish problem, the ego, the egoistic feelings, all egoistic feelings. And then finally, of course, there is the eighth consciousness, the alaya consciousness, which is the banking consciousness or the storage consciousness that store all the energy in. For every thought, for every action, for every speech, whether it's a store, it's stored in the alaya consciousness. And when the body dies, everything shrinks into that storage consciousness. And then that storage consciousness is responsible for the reincarnation. That alaya consciousness, you cannot see it. It's not matter, it's not sound. It's not smell, it's not taste, it's not touch. It's energy. How can, you, how can you see energy? How can you hear energy? When energy is expressed as a sound, you can hear it. When energy is expressed in form, you can see it. When energy is expressed in taste, you can, in flavor, you can taste it. But it isn't. So from it, we know that the Buddha says, there's eight consciousnesses. Um, why do we have to know all these? That's what the mind is all about. When you come into the temple, we're not talking about religion anymore. No religion. Throw that religion out. Nothing about God. No, about you, yourself. About your own mind. What gets you wrong? What gets you right? What gets you into criminal offenses? What gets you into meritorious deeds you do to others? It's all from the mind. 
Everything originates from the mind. Not from God. From mind, from your mind. So is it important that you should know your own mind? And based on that concept, we've got to know our mind. Not just knowing it, we have to train it. To train it on the right path. That's what we call treading the path of the sages. Treading the path of enlightenment. You walk into that path, knowing your mind, training your mind, you're walking towards nirvana. You're walking to on like a boat traveling with the, in the, on the Dharmakaya ship to the shore of nirvana. No more life and death, no more suffering. Because you're right, because you know your mind, you know how to put your mind under control first, and your mind is going to full perfection. That's why we're training it. Just to repeat, how many consciousnesses are there altogether? Eight. Everybody has that eight consciousnesses. The eye consciousness, the ear consciousness, the nose consciousness, the tongue consciousness, the body consciousness of touch, and finally, that is the very powerful six, the six consciousness, we call it the mono consciousness, because all the forerunning five consciousness depends on the six consciousness to exercise it. This eye is only a sensory organ. It itself cannot see. It's just the lens. It's the sixth consciousness that controls it. The ears cannot hear. It's the mono consciousness that communicates the hearing. The eardrum is just a tool. It's not the hearing itself. Although the ears can hear, it cannot differentiate the sound. It's the sixth consciousness. The sixth consciousness is responsible for all goods and all bad deeds. And the mono consciousness is the ego, which gets you into wrong doings. And everything stored into the eight consciousness or lie consciousness. Isn't that logical? The eight consciousnesses explain the function of the mind. And I gave it to you very briefly. That's how it functions. Now, let's get back to these nine stages of training the mind. Because when we interact with our senses, with our ego emphasis, we tend to be egoistic. We tend to interact erroneously with the outside environments. So when we see bad things, when we see sensuous things, it arouses sensuality in us. When we see beautiful things, it arouses greediness in us. When we hear things we don't want to hear, it arouses anger in us. When we see things, hear things, and we weigh it against our own standard, we arouse jealousy. We arouse all kinds of mental afflictions. That's how, that's how karma comes out. All these mental afflictions induce you to perform, to behave, to speak. And in the process of this speaking, behaving, we commit all kinds of wrongdoings, and that gets us into trouble. It's important that we get back to the saintly path. So that's why we're meditating. Meditation is not to get the Buddha's blessings. You've got to depend on yourself, not on Buddha. Buddha only tells you the way. You have to do it yourself. If you tell John to walk to downtown, you can't walk it for him. He has to do it himself. But you can give him a map. You can guide him. But he's got to walk himself. The first is mental placement. Um, and also, before I go any further, um, the objective of this nine stages of training is basically the training in samatha. More in samatha than in vipassana. Those who know samatha and vipassana knows what I'm talking about. It's more on concentration and a little less on insight. 
This world is in three kinds of existence, the Kama Dattu existence, the Ruba Dattu existence, and Aruba Dattu existence. You really have to learn more about it. So, if you practice these nine stages, you achieve the highest Samadhi in the Kama Dattu level. And more than just that, if you are successful in the nine stages, it could be one level higher than Kama Dattu, that is, the Samadhi neighboring on the first Dhyana level. That's the highest. Now you know, if you practice the nine stages, it's the highest in this world of desires. The samadhi, the concentration in, this, the, in the highest form. Okay, with that, with that, with those are the prerequisites in understanding what I'm talking about. Uh, those are the conditions that you have to know if you understand what I mean. If you don't understand those, it's you, you have a lot to catch up. Okay, the first is mental placement, which I already mentioned in the first uh, lecture. And then, basically, the ment this mental placement is, um, is an inward placement. In, in other words, you create an object of concentration, and then you concentrate on it. And I have already talked about it for an hour or so. So, the first is mental placement. The second is continuous placement, which you already know. The third is patch placement, which is correcting placement. Placement is placing your mind. So when you're sitting in here, you've got to know where you place your, where you place your mind on. You can't just sit there doing nothing. You're not. If you sit there doing nothing and just relaxing and just feeling the quiet too of this hall, you're wasting your time. That's not it. You just sit there, just relaxing. Oh, meditation. After I meditate for a while, I feel relaxed and okay. That's not. If I, if I give you the, the, um, uh, the simile of meditation, meditation is like looking for treasure. It's a treasure hunt. Um, if you just sit there doing nothing in relaxation, you, don't even, you haven't even entered the door. You're still wandering at the door. You haven't even entered the door of meditation. And it's not right because if you have come to that hall, why don't you enter it and get the treasure? Don't just wander at the door. You're wasting your time when you do that. So we have mental placement, the first level. And then we have continuous placements. And then we have patch or correcting placement. And then the fourth is close placement. Now, with the previous mental state, you recognize, you recognize this distraction and eliminate it. Uh, what I mean is, you're meditating on an object. Of course, that object we said is anapanasati. You're meditating on it, the breath. You're meditating on the breath, anapanasati. And then, because your mind is always distracted away, you have distraction. You go away. It's like a monkeying mind. You stay on that object for two minutes and then you think about something else. About your own home, about your job, about your car, about your kids, about your husband, about your wife. Your, our mind is always wandering in every direction. You only realize it when you sit down quietly. You only realize it that way. If you don't sit down and quietly, you don't know that your mind has been wandering all over the place and most of the time your mind is not under your control. That's why we tend to create bad karma. If your mind is always under your control, you're on your way to the sages, to the path of the sages. So, the fourth stage is close placement. You recognize the distractions and you try to bring back your thought. With this mental stage, you have eliminated distraction with other, with efforts, place your attention upon the object of meditation. So remember the example of the cat holding down the rat. Now the cat is in control, not removing his eyesight off the rat. Your attention is repeatedly drawn in and refined and establishing greater stability. You're close to your object of attention. Your ob object of attention is your breath. And when the thought goes away, it goes far, far away, and then you realize it, and you walk back, you bring it back. But now, 
it doesn't go away too far. It goes away, it comes back again immediately. So your close, your close placement, that's the fourth stage. Close means close to the object of meditation, not far away. Here your attentions become more refined and focused than the previous three stages, and still it is not refined, and it is not the most refined and the most focused, as it may occasionally be distracted. Okay, but you have remind yourself now that you need to further practice with more efforts and, and, and constantly remind yourself not to give up the focus. So that's, that's the focus. Okay, that's the, the fifth. Now comes to, uh, that's the fourth. Now comes to the fifth stage is taming. With the previous four stages, basically it's on the crude thoughts. Now it comes to taming is the more refined thoughts. Um, but at the taming stage, you must have sufficient devotion, confidence, and faith in, in what you're doing. To achieve that, you have to know the benefits uh, and merits you may obtain if you're successful in your meditation. If you're successful in your focus, your mind would, be, would bring wonders to you. The mind is extremely powerful. If you put it under control, it gives you wonders that you won't, it, you can't even, it's, you can't even imagine it. You'll be more focused. Everything you do would be more easily carried out than if you lose your focus. Taming. You further tame it. And taming is taming the more refined, distracting thoughts. Taming is taming more towards the sixth consciousness, the mono consciousness. And why is it refined? Because usually your eyes, your ears, your nose, your taste, your touch interact with the present environment. You won't hear sound of last year, would you? You won't see something that happened 20 years ago, would you? You won't do that. It's the present. Your, your senses interact with the present, but there is the six senses that interact with not just the present, with the past. You think about your, your childhood, you think about all this child abuse, you think about your marriage, your broken marriage, you don't like it, you, you think about your, your, your past, your ex-wife, and you think about what, what bad deeds other people have done to you. you, you recall, you recall the past. And you worry about the future. What am I going to do? I don't have too much money in my bank account, and I'll have to pay rent. I'm out of a job. You, you worry about the future. At the present, because you reflect on the past, which is unhappy or happy past, you may, you may reflect on your happy past or unhappy past, and you worry about the future, and that's what you're doing at the present. You worry. You're not living at the present moment. You're not at peace. You're not at peace with yourself right now. You think you're at peace with yourself? You're not at peace. Because you've thought about the, you think about the past, you worry about the, the, the future, and you're not happy. You're not peaceful. But, but you have to tame it down. So that's the taming process on, on your more refined, distracting thought. So in other words, all these stages of training is going from one stage to another. First you have mental placement, how to direct your mind inward. And then you have continuous placement, how to continuously directing it inward. And then you have closed placements, and you have patch placements, correcting all your, your distracting thoughts. Bring it back, focused, put on the focus. And then it now comes to taming. Taming is more refined. Not just on the previous five consciousnesses now, it's on the sixth consciousness, which is very active. Your mind is, 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 is tame in concentration. You are no longer distracted by the signs of any of the five sensory objects of visual form and auditory, and auditory form and so on. 
then you are slowly getting away from detach detachment, I, I mean you are slowly getting away from attachment, hostility and ignorance. And you slowly realize the benefits of the meditation if you come to the taming part. If you are taming the stage, you're on your way to success. Not many people come to the taming part. But it's not difficult though. Think about it, mental placement, you have an object of attention and then you focus on that object, don't let it distract you. And your focus is so close, so continuous, and you're continuously correcting it. How difficult it is. You sit there and work at your mind. Meditation is not passive. Meditation is not sitting there sleeping or just relaxing. Meditation is to actively, with efforts, work on the mind actively. All these distracting thoughts, eliminate them. Focus. Get that focus. If you that, get that focus right, that means you already have brought your mind under control. And then, because you, you are the master of your own mind, power comes. All this power comes when you are master of your own mind. But you need all these stages to be the master of your own mind. Are you the master of your own mind now? You're not. We're not. That's why we're making errors in life. That's, that's why we're, we're creating all this suffering in life. We make all these mistakes in life. Because we're not the master of our own fate. We were not. Now we want to change that course. We want to be the master of ourselves. Not God. You are the master. You walk that path. The Buddha told you, told us, that's how you train it. That's how you get to understand it. And that's how it works wonder for you. If you know the mind, control the mind, tame the mind, it leads you to enlightenment. Because the power comes when your mind is under control. And that coincides with everything we do in, a, in, in daily life. Everything we do. If you put your mind to where your work is, imagine what can that be done. What, what, what power that would be created.